The second that you join Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, your reputation goes from here to here. How are you feeling? I know you had a, a fall like uh, a month or so ago. How are you feeling now? You know, I'm feeling so much better. I, you know, sometimes when things happen and you, sorry, so I, I'm actually have anxiety today. So that's why I'm a little, oh, okay. <laughs> but um, sometimes when really, you know, unfortunate things happen, it forces you to kind of look at what's going on in your life and see what it is that you need to pivot. And so I ended up going to all these different hormone specialists and figuring out what's going on. And, you know, as you know, as you just had a baby boy, after having a baby, your hormones can get, you know, a little askew. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, I'd had done and then I had COVID. So both things they think can trigger things in your hormones. So I think the combination of both things, I just was like burning the candle at both ends. And yeah, so I'm definitely feeling significantly better, right. but still trying to like figure out what, you know, else I need to do to kind right. of get feeling on top of my game again. That must've been so scary and it's probably still is. I mean, it was definitely scary. I mean, it was scary because like my daughter was right there mm -hmm. and it was dark. And so she didn't understand kind of the magnitude of how bad it was. And then I didn't know that right after you faint that you're like, I mean, this is probably common sense, but that you're not supposed to get right up again. <laughs> I wouldn't have known that either. You know, like in my, you know, like my mom instinct, like I immediately wanted to jump right back up, but then I fainted again. Jeez. And that's where I like kind of did more damage. And then at that point I just was like, oh honey, you know, like how about you just give mom one of your blankets? And then I just kind of like laid there until I felt good enough. Like she fell back asleep and like I felt good enough to like go in and get my husband and you know, <laughs> and then the next day once we were all like in a better place, I was like, Slate, how come you didn't go get your dad last <laughs> night? She was like, well, I didn't want to wake up Cruz and worry him because Cruz was in our room. I'm like, oh, so we were just going to let me bleed out in there? Right. It's like, I didn't know you were bleeding last night because it was Oh hard. my God, that's so funny. Well, I'm glad that you are on the road to recovery and definitely feeling better because that, like I said, that is a scary situation. Um, and now you said, you know, it's, it's quiet in your house. What's it like having the kids finally back at school? I mean, this is the first day that they've been in school, like a full day. And I mean, oh, I, dare I say like almost two years, because mm -hmm. even when they went back to school last year, it was like partial days. So, I mean, this is huge. And we recently just put Dove into preschool for a couple of days a week because she has had such severe like stranger danger mm -hmm. because she's a pandemic baby. Mm -hmm. So, you know, today, Hey, is like, I mean, I'm probably anxious because I don't even know what to do with like being alone in my house for the first time and who knows how long. How is Dove adjusting to it? Well, she, the first couple of days, it was a little rough. I mean, she's now been in preschool for probably a month okay. and now she loves it. Like I drop her off and she's like, bye. You know, she's excited Ooh. to be there and she has her little friends and she loves to see her teachers. Um, but you know, she also loves to be home and be with her siblings as well. But still, it really hasn't changed her her stranger danger. We walk into the doctor's office and she's like, ah! right. I love that. I love that. It's so funny. I mean, what's I mean, she's getting so big. I mean, do you miss those early days of like the newborn stage, or are you like, I am so happy that those are behind us? Oh, I mean, there's you miss like the newborn snuggles, of course, but like she has such a strong little personality now. It's hilarious. Like she is so opinionated and like she knows what she wants and i mean my dad even says he's like i think she's such a fighter because she had neurosurgery at such a young age that like something is embedded in her because if she doesn't get her way like she I mean, her above any of the other kids, like she stands to her ground like no other. And I mean, she is, I mean, she's so funny. She lights up the house and I mean, we really have a blast with her, but like she is boss baby for sure. <laughs> she's ruling, ruling the roost, I guess. <laughs> no nonsense. I mean, how is she feeling? I know in June you said that she was no longer wearing the helmet. So is she, you know, I mean, can you just give us a, a little bit of a health update on her? She's doing excellent. I mean, she has her follow-ups every six months with the surgeons just to make sure that everything's looking good, but she's doing great. Her development's great. She's talking, she's communicating, she's pointing. She, you know, she's doing all the things that kids at her age are doing. And 
you know, that's all that we can ask for and more. That's so great. That's so awesome. I love hearing that. Any more baby fever for you? <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. My son is obsessed. He keeps saying like, mommy, mommy, please. Like, uh, like one more baby. I'm like, no, honey, please. I can't, <laughs> I, I cannot do it. Like part of this whole thing with the hormone stuff was like, they told me to, to get off birth control mm. um, and to now I'm on like the IUD, but I, my son was like, I didn't see you taking that, that pill. Cause he's the kids notice everything. So they yeah. didn't see you take the birth control pills. So he's like, I don't see you taking that no baby making pill anymore. Are you having a baby? And I'm like, no, I have something else now, which I'm, I don't even know how to explain it. We'll talk right, about that. Like, later, we're, not, we're, not, we're not going down that road right now. <laughs> Seven, but no, there's not a baby coming. That is so funny. Well, how does Edwin feel about that? He's always like, I mean, even my gynecologist, like not to get into too much detail, but like I, when I went in to get the IUD, I'm like, how long does it last? And he's like, 10 years, but I'll see you in a year when you're ready to have another baby. I'm like, stop, Dr. G, why is everyone heckling me he's like you said you were done after the first two and i'm like well the first two were like you know it was iui and ivf and super challenging so like i never thought i'd do it again and then dove our miracle baby but i really feel like before i would look around the table and feel like we need and you know like i'd love to have another but now i look around and i really feel like our family's complete so i feel happy where we are but i mean i guess you can never say never <laughs> you never say never you never know <laughs> and you also have a stepdaughter too how do you bond you know how do you guys bond together and because it seems like you guys have such a great relationship as well I think the biggest thing is just communication, you know, especially as they get into the teenage years and as they get older, you know, and the world of technology and really wanting to be separate. We really try to do things as a family and where you we're talking as organic because sometimes like eating dinner, it feels forced. Mm -hmm. And especially as kids get older, they don't want to share everything with you. But if you're playing a volleyball game or if you're playing chess or if you're, you know, even going on a hike, it opens up those conversations and it makes it more natural. Or we also have the conversation, what's your high or your low of the day? Yeah, I love and that. And getting to know each other and then, like you know, getting to know their friends or their likes and their dislikes is really, you know, the best way to kind of do it. Definitely. And I know that you've been so busy with your podcast um, and I absolutely love it. I think it's so fantastic. So what has been like your favorite guests and what are some of your dream guests that you want to have? I mean, the best thing about Teddy Teapot is like, you know, I, I'm hired by iHeart to talk about all the things that I'm interested in from Britney Spears to like having my best friend Kyle Richards on to, to you know, every to talking about anxiety. It's whatever's going on in my life currently that I get to talk about. And it's things that I would talk about in my daily life regardless, but then I get to bring in professionals to like really dig deep into it. So it's like we, we really go deep into everything. And the coolest thing is you can call it. Definitely. I love that. Um, do you, uh, I, I mean, are you uh, trying to get your dad on the podcast? Is he, he did it. He's been on. Oh, he has been on. Okay. Yes, he's been on. He, he came on um, a while ago, like probably a year ago. And then okay. he surprised me on my birthday podcast as well. I love that. I love that. I know that you said recently that Dina Lohan was trying to, uh, trying to date your dad. Is that still a thing? Oh my God. This is why I'm obsessed now with Dina Lohan. So after I did it a You know when you say something that you regret it and you're like, oh no, why did I say that? Like, I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, and I was like, I feel bad. I should have said something to Dina Lohan first, like whatever, but she sent me a DM that was so cute. And she was like, love today, so funny. Now, are you gonna set me up? Question mark. And I just love that she laughed at it because that's truly like what it is, you know? Like, and so I really got a kick out of it. And now, you know, we DM'd back and forth. We, I now accepted the requests and we uh, we wrote back and forth. I but no, it. I let him do his own uh, matchmaking. So you never, you never set him up on dates? I mean, I have never, uh, I've never gone that, not through a DM message situation with somebody I don't know, no. I, I guess it's gotta be kind of weird to even to think about that, but like your daughter setting your dad up on dates, I guess, you probably don't want to do well, that. Well, it's one thing to be like, uh Okay, these two know, here's the thing. Let's say maybe I have set him up in the past, but those days are over. <laughs> do you like his new girlfriend? Do you, do, you, do you approve of his new girlfriend? 
Uh, no comment on his personal relationship status. I plead the fifth. Plead the fifth. All right. I know you've also been uh, co-hosting E Daily Pop. That was that has to be so much fun. Oh my! I love it because pop culture. I mean, I already have like five text chains like where we are constantly talking about it anyway. So being able to do that is just an extension of my life, and it's so it's all the things that I already am obsessed with that I get to talk about on TV. So I love it. Not to mention like. Justin and Morgan are so incredible. Everybody over at E has been so awesome. So I love it, love it, love it. Is that something that maybe you want to do more of in the future? Maybe hosting a little bit more? Of course. I mean, being able to go in, talk about things that I care about, that are fun, that are light, that are, have different opinions, opinions that you know, with people that you don't actually know that there's no big repercussions afterwards. You're not fighting with anyone. You're able to actually have, you know, different opinions and it not turning into like drag out fight. I mean, it's really all, it's all the feels for me and something I absolutely love. Totally. Well, speaking of drag out fights, um, um, I know that you you made uh, an appearance on the season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, but afterwards, you know, there was all these things that going on with Garcelle. Were you shocked that she asked producers why you were there since you are such good friends with Kyle? I mean, going on Housewives, for, I mean, I was probably on four minutes. It was all the things you would imagine. It was uncomfortable, fun, and 24 hours of Twitter torture. Like, <laughs> it's just so... Bizarre. I mean, to to perfectly lay this out because it's now turned into like 15 different things. Of course. We were all sitting at di at dinner when she and I said it was right after I said the thing about Erica, mm -hmm. um, where Garcelle said, "Why is she even here?" So it wasn't like I didn't. She was saying it behind my back. So that's what. And so then she put on Twitter like, "I didn't. That's not true. That's not what I said. I said she said that." Um, which that was more, I don't know if that was directed towards me or towards production or whom it was directed to. Mm -hmm. What I meant when I said that was by her saying that it wasn't the nicest of things to say to somebody who you know mm -hmm. has no longer on the show. It's obviously in a kind of uncomfortable situation by being there anyway and was there for three years. But, you know, it's neither here nor there. I had sent her a text prior to doing my podcast, hoping to kind of clear it up, but guess it didn't. Guess it didn't, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> were, you, were you surprised of that reaction to her? Because it, were you? did you guys leave the last reunion on good terms? You guys are- Well, I mean, we, this is the part that surprised me is that while we were filming and, you know, leading up to, a, that happening at the dinner table. We were chatting, we talked about kids, we talked about life. Then she was like that at the dinner table. And then I was like, ooh, okay, um, that stung. Like that wasn't great. And that was, you know, whatever. But then I saw her confessional where she called me the gnat, you know, is what it is. But I, I know what she's doing. I know that that's to get a rise out of the fans. She's going to give you what the fans want. Like, oh yeah, sting it to her, give it to her. Yes, queen, you know, all the things. Right. So, you know, that's part of being on the housewives. But it was more like, was it worth it? Like, was it worth it to you to, you know, to hurt my feelings? Um, and I guess it was, but what was confusing to me was at way after we were done filming is she was texting me, mm -hmm. you know, text me about random things like, you know, where did you get that mattress or who's yeah. who reps you for this or very happy birthday. looks like the most amazing time. And to me, if I don't, if I find somebody as annoying as a gnat, I don't know when their birthday is. Mm -hmm. I'm not reaching out to them. And like, that's just, that's just the truth of the matter. So that's the part that was shocking to me. What she did at the dinner table, it's done for a second, whatever. But it was the confessional to me that I was like, hmm, yeah. you should have you just never texted me again. If you're gonna talk about me behind my back, leave it at that. Right, so I am, I'm assuming then, that like like you said, you reached out to her to do the podcast, but no response. Oh, I didn't reach out to her to do the oh, podcast. Okay. I reached out to her before I, Tuesday, the day I saw the episode before it aired, okay. I just reached out to her and just said like, hey, you know, you consistently say that you, you know, you never want to get somebody why they're down and you, you know, you're always wanting to lift women up you know that I came in to do the show and obviously after being there for three years, that was an uncomfortable situation. I hope it made you feel good to say that about me. Yeah. 
And she never responded. Never responded. I mean, but, I mean, she sent me a couple texts on July 1st, so <laughs> that's her number. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, did you feel uncomfortable going into the situation? Were you hesitant about doing it? I mean, they didn't show it, but there was another scene where Kyle came in. I, You know, originally when I went into film, it was solely to film at my house to show that, like, I'm still alive and well and things are good. And Kyle came in to film with me and we filmed with the kids at my house and while we were filming, recapping all the updates, she asked me to come to that dinner. And she's like begging, you know, like, of course. And mm -hmm. um, I want to do it because, you know, 80% of those women's, women's, 80% of those women's, 80% of those women are still some of my best friends, yeah. you know? So of course I want to be there. Of course I miss production. Of course I miss parts of being on TV and parts of that entire dynamic. But there's also parts like, you know, where a lot of people that have been on Housewives hate to admit it, like your ego is bruised. Like there's parts that are hard, you know, and there's there's a sadness that comes in when you when you are no longer a part of something that was a huge part of your life for three years. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there was a part that stung, but I was like, you know what? I, I don't have too big of an ego to show up and support a friend or be there for, you know, Ky Kyle is one of my best friends. And in real life, I would be there at her Christmas dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to be true to life. Totally. Did it make you miss the show at all? Or did it almost give you closure in a way? You know, it... <sighs> See, I mean, truthfully, seeing the crew, like seeing the people that like I spent so much time talking to, that's that's who I missed, you know, like seeing all the, you know, the guys that we did the interviews, all the conversations, like the same thing, you know, like the taps on the shoulder, like those are the things that you really miss. And then the, the fun parts. Yeah, of course, miss that. But then the aftermath, this Twitter stuff, I don't miss that. Yeah, you don't miss that. No, totally. I mean, after like, you know, when you found out the news that, you, you know, you weren't returning, was it a hard pill to swallow for a while? And have you been able to watch back this season at all? I have totally been able to watch back yeah. this season. I think the the only hard pill, the hard pill for me to swallow is like, I, um, I, I'm a worker, like I am somebody who shows up, I'm always on time, I always do exactly what I'm told, you know, like I, I'm a worker bee. And there was never any inclination to me that this wasn't working yeah. mm -hmm. until I read it in the Daily Mail. So that's the only, you know, but, it is what it is. So it was a shock. And I'd never not been asked back to do anything. So it was like, you know, it is what it is. But I, I you know, I, there's no regrets. Right. I had a great time and, you know, I had a not so great time. Right. So. <laughs> there were peaks and valleys. Would you come back if they asked you to come back? Full time. I really don't know. Yeah. You know, who knows? Probably a couple weeks ago, I probably would have been like, yes. You know, after this past week, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> um, I really don't know. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you have been watching this season. Obviously, a huge storyline this season is everything going on with Erica. Um, were you surprised at how open she was this season about what's going on in her personal life? Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine how challenging this has been for her. I, you know, I, I'm proud that she's been able to be so open. And, you know, I think Erica's excellent at being a really good friend to other people. And I think it's hard for her to let people in. So I think that even though, you know, people may want more in every single crumb of detail, this is more than she ever has before. Mm -hmm. Do you, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. And I think that goes to show how much she's probably really been struggling. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with Sutton at all and how she's been kind of handling the situation with Erica? Like, do you feel like she should have her back in all of this? I don't necessarily say that you have to have somebody's back or not have somebody's back, but I do think it's a little bit hypocritical to never ask somebody questions about their personal life to then all of a sudden want all of the questions answered. Mm -hmm. You know, like nobody was grilling her about all of these personal details before they were just letting it be. Sure. So why now all of a sudden that there's press and there's this, do you want all this personal information? And, you know, Sutton saying she's worried about her reputation. People kind of, I, I said something on Daily Pop where I said, mm -hmm. you know, nobody knew who Sutton was before, you know, Daily Pop, I mean, before, uh, Real Housewives. Nobody knew who I was either. I wasn't saying that as a dig, right. but 
you if you're really concerned about your reputation if you want to uphold like an amazing reputation and all of the charities you're in and all the things you don't go on real housewives of beverly hills right the second that you join real housewives of beverly hills your reputation goes from here to here so that 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 argument is a little flawed for me yeah i mean were you surprised that she said that she like seeked legal advice because she's associated with erica as well i mean I was surprised because it was my picture that was in the LA Times. <laughs> Not Simon's, right? <laughs> totally, totally. Um, you, I mean, have you spoken to Erica? Are you guys still um, in communication at all? Yeah, we're still in communication, but I mean, I think that when somebody is going through something, there's only so much that you can push and you have to just be there for them when they need you and then let things play out. Yeah. And, and see where it is. And I, I think that, you know, being relentless and trying to get all the answers that I don't even think Erica knows right now isn't beneficial to any of their friendships. Definitely. How is Erica doing, you know, watching back this season and kind of dealing with everything? Is she in a okay place, I guess, or as good as you? Oh, I don't want to answer on her okay. behalf. I don't think that's No worries. Fair. No, totally. Um, yeah. Quickly though, but what's your thought on Lisa kind of trusting Erica? Because people kind of think it's a double standard after how she handled the whole Denise situation last season. Well, I think that it's a different situation, but I also think, I mean, I mean, saying it bluntly, I think that Lisa and Erica are better friends. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'm closer with some people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna protect them more. I'm gonna, you know, have their back more than others. But I also think that when it came to Denise stuff it could have been very easy for that conversation to be over. Mm -hmm. It could, that conversation could have been done in two seconds. Yes, we're friends. Yes, you know, this happened. We had this conversation. You know what? It's none of your business, anything else. Mm -hmm. But totally. she never said that. Yeah. Have you ever, did you ever talk to Le uh, Denise after cameras stopped rolling? No. Yeah. No, I mean she still uses my hair, my hair, uh, hair person, but that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's the only connection that you guys have. <laughs> yeah, she blocked me. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, really? She did block you. <laughs> so that's that's done. Um, yeah. Speaking of your birthday, it looks like you guys had an amazing time on your vacation, um, on your 40th birthday vacation. Oh my, we had so much fun. Unbelievable mm -hmm. amount of time. Like I, we, one, we didn't think we were going to be able to go because we had originally rented a house and then we didn't know like whose house, like, you know, you just rent a house. And then all of a sudden we get like a, Kyle gets a message and she's like, we, the house that we rented, it burned down. And we're like, what? So apparently we had rented like the house my husband had rented was Joe Francis's house. That house burned down. Like we oh weren't saying Joe Francis or anything. We just had like- <laughs> Right, 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 totally. Airbnb or whatever. And so that house burned down. So we're like, you know, scrambling. We end up renting another house and like it all worked out. And so, I mean, I never, I, never again do I think we'll be able to do something like that. But it was, I mean, especially after so long being, you know, not having anything like that. It was just such a blast. Totally. And how do you feel about being 40 and fabulous? I feel fine. You know, I, I always feel pretty young until I see myself in a picture next to somebody young. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh, shoot. You look amazing. <laughs> you look fantastic.